X Limited acquires 70% of equity shares of Z Limited as on 31st March 2017 at a total cost of rupees 70 lakhs. The following information is available from the balance sheet of Z Limited on 31st March 2017. See, we are buying 70% shares on 31st March 2017. So 31st March 17 is turning out to be our acquisition date. And the information is also given on acquisition date. They have given us fixed assets, investments, current assets, loans and advances, 15% debentures and current liabilities. Normally what we do is we do pre and post acquisition analysis of the subsidiary. Here post acquisition analysis will not be possible because they have not given us any information about the subsidiary after that company became our subsidiary. So the day when we are acquiring shares, information is given on that particular date. So this will basically help us to calculate the net assets on the date of acquisition. We know that the share in the net assets on acquisition date should be compared with the cost of investment. This will help you to cancel the investment in the subsidiary and it will give you the resultant goodwill or the capital reserve. So that seems to be the nature of this particular question. But till now, whatever questions that we were solving, they used to give us share capital and the reserves information. This time, they have not given us the share capital and reserve information. Instead, they have given you assets and the liabilities. But it doesn't really make any difference. If you apply, right, if you apply the balance sheet equation, see, net assets, net assets is basically equal to assets minus liabilities right and assets minus liabilities is nothing but share capital plus reserves and surplus i'm writing in short only reserves share capital plus reserves is the same as assets minus liabilities it is the same as the net assets so they have given us the asset and liability information. We will work out the net assets on the basis of that and find out what is the goodwill or the capital reserve. But yes, some extra information is there. They are saying that the following revaluations have been agreed upon, but it is still not included in the above figures. Fixed assets, which are, uh, uh, we are increasing it by 20% and investments, we are bringing it down by 10%. See, these revaluations are going to be done on our acquisition date, which is 31st March 2017. So when we are making a list of the net assets, at that time, we will give a fact of the revaluation. What more? Z Limited declared and paid dividend at the rate of 20% on the equity shares on 31st March 2017. We are buying shares on 31st March 2017 and on 31st March 2017 itself, we are receiving the dividend. Obviously, this dividend will be for the pre-acquisition period. As per accounting standard 13, if you are receiving any pre-acquisition dividend, then such dividend cannot be credited to the P&L. Such dividend is recovery of cost. If it is a recovery of cost, we should credit this dividend to the investment account. So whatever is your cost of acquisition of shares, right? They have given that we have purchased shares for 70 lakhs. The cost of the shares 70 lakhs, it should be reduced by, it should be reduced by the amount of pre-acquisition dividend that you are receiving. Now the problem over here is they have not given you the share capital. See, when dividend rates are given, dividend rates are applied to the paid up equity share capital, but they have not given us the paid up equity share capital. Then how will I find out the amount of dividend? They are saying that X Limited purchase the shares of Z at 20 per share. This will help us. See, we have purchased 70% of the equity shares for 70 lakhs of rupees. So what I can do is I can argue that number of shares purchased, okay, number of shares purchased 
They have given me 70 lakhs, which I can divide by 20. So it is turning out to be 3.5 lakhs. So we have purchased 3.5 lakh shares. Paid up value of the share is not given. Let us assume the paid up value of the share as 10. See, they have, we have purchased the shares at 20 rupees per share. If you have purchased shares for 20 rupees, we can safely assume that the paid up value is rupees 10. So we say, assumed that paid up value per share is rupees 10. So, pre-acquisition dividend, pre-acquisition dividend, we can work it out now. Pre-acquisition dividend is, what do you say? Pre-acquisition dividend is, you have 3.5 lakh shares, which we have purchased. Paid up value is 10, and the rate of dividend is 20%. This turns out to be rupees 7 lakhs. What do you say? Our pre-acquisition dividend is rupees 7 lakhs. This pre-acquisition dividend will be credited to the investment account. I will reduce the cost of my investment by pre-acquisition dividend of 7 lakhs. Again, I will repeat, this is as per accounting standard 13, not really as per accounting standard 21. Yes, we say determination of pre-acquisition net assets, pre-acquisition net assets. Figures are in lakhs of rupees. I have the question with me. I am copying the figures from there. We say fixed assets. 120. Investments. 55. Current assets, 70. Loans and advances, 15. Let's take an intermittent total right now. Two sixty. Less 15% debentures. 90 current liabilities fifty so we get one twenty. This is net assets before revaluation. So I get net assets before the revaluation. Now, what is the revaluation? We are revaluing on 31st March 2017. See, these figures are also on 31st March 2017 and revaluation is also done on 31st March 2017. I will increase my fixed assets by 20% and I'll reduce my investments by 10%. Okay, let's do it.
revaluation on 31st March 2017, increase in fixed assets, right, increase in fixed assets, 120 into 20%. So that is 24. Decrease in investments. We have to reduce it by 10%. 5.5. So we get 138.5. This is net assets after revaluation. Since revaluation is done on the acquisition date, we are giving a fact as a pre acquisition item. So it's time to work out the goodwill or the capital reserve. Determination of goodwill, public capital reserve. Right, we are basically supposed to cancel the investment. You can even call this as cost of control working. So we say cost of investment. Figures are in lakhs of rupees. Remember that 70. First, I will reduce this by the pre acquisition dividend. So, pre acquisition dividend. We had discussed this earlier. The pre acquisition dividend is 7 lakhs. So, I get 63 less share in net assets on 31st March 2017, the date of acquisition, 138.5, we have purchased 70%. So I work out the difference. 33.95. We are paying only 63 lakhs and in return we are getting net assets of 96.95. We are underpaying, so it is giving rise to capital reserve. 